we not have that light, please? That's the first request. Secondly, I think we've run late, so I'm going to um, speed this through if I have to. First of all, I would like to thank everybody for being here, even though I'm sure a lot of belts have been tightened because everybody's hungry. So I will try and make this relatively brief. Um, this is a subject I've touched on before, and uh, it's been given a little bit of respite uh, and life by a small talk that was given by uh, Michael Jensen, an, a German uh, archaeologist. Zardaristan, that is what our city has turned into. Barriers come up everywhere. Barriers are physical, which seem to make this city uh, look like a war zone, which it is. But they are psychological, physical, economic, and of course emotional and symbolic. Symbolic barriers are something that uh, it's very, very difficult to break. And it's only now in the, la in the last years that we've been trying to break them. Next. Mohenjo Daro, we all know it, we all love it. We are proud of being part of this civilization. We must relate back to it. But do we really know and feel what Mohenjo-daro was? A city where, if you still know and you still can feel that the private citizens of that city led the best of lives. The streets we know had sewage on the sides, they were paved, they were baths. It did have a wall, but not to keep people in. The granary, which is the biggest, almost uh, symbolic of things that we see was for the people. You don't see any remains of palaces or huge temples. There was religion, but it was not uh, utilized. It wasn't made into such a huge deal The material that we see was for everyone. The burnt brick was not just for the palaces or like uh, the stone used for the, the pyramids or uh, a stone used for the cathedrals, etc. This was for everyone. And with such a precise system, one can contemplate that this was probably the first democracy because people did work well together. It's an idea, it's a thought that we could all do some more research in and maybe look at it. Athens, a partial democracy. We know that uh, only a few amount of people or the citizens were um, part of the whole process. And of course, the Acropolis is all about religion. The Acro all the temples, etc., 
are up there. Democracy has been kept uh, not as a symbol. The symbol was about religion. The Magna Carta, London, that great document that gave so many people so many ideas and of course was the first one that talked about you know the rights of people rights of everyone nowadays it seems like uh, all our rights have been taken away yet what is built is gothic revival what is built is going back to the power of uh, the cathedrals. So the parliament is related to power of religion almost. Paris. The home of the revolution, the home of where aristocracy was taken down yet even post revolution things are built as great symbolic acts of power next going back to rome next washington that great democracy you know this is their biggest supposedly contribution to the world i don't know about drones but certainly democracy is something that they talk about and the capitol building the great seat of democratic power goes back to rather very very obvious power um, St. Peter's and many other churches uh, could, could be the uh, thought of this great dome, etc. And, and it's really very opulent, really, really the idea of uh, people power is maybe not expressed. Next. Even the Reichstag. Okay, still the same thought. Moscow, you know, the great revolution, etc. And what does it build? It doesn't build the Russian constructivists, but palaces that evoke power. Next. So we can say that you have these great issues of power uh, that are supposed to be democratic but all you have to do is change the flags the stars and stripes the swastika or the hammer and sickle the buildings are the same even Islamabad um, the power of the grid superimposed right on top of the terrain everything leading up to the parliament which is really a watered watered down version of uh, what was trying to be put up it's too bad that Lukan was lost to East Pakistan and Bangladesh his schemes are so, so much better. But under the influence of Creer, Sterling at the Stutz Gallery does do something which uh, has effects overall. He creates a museum with art for all. You actually experience the museum without actually um, going into it. 
you climb up a ramp, you go through the, uh, the drum, and you leave. The drum now doesn't have a dome. It has all the symbols uh, of a democratic Germany. The color, the stone. So, next. Which gives rise to fosters new Bundestag where the dome is for the people. You actually circulate, ramp up, circulate in this dome. And what do you look down at? You look down at the assembly. You're actually the people on top overlooking what is happening Their and what are they legislating? Very, very clear, clear uh, ideas of how to bring the thoughts of democracy into our um, architecture. Philadelphia. Okay, Robert Venturi is influencing a large number of people in the postmodernist time. But he also does something which is uh, quite wonderful. He sketches out the Benjamin, Tom Thompson, uh, sorry, Benjamin Franklin house um, in the sky. It's just writing in the sky because he doesn't have any reference uh, to what it ha the house looked like. So he just draws in the sky. You can see everything is below. And the symbol of the house is up there. Canberra. Here, the influence has been taken in the dome or the pyramid has been sketched out in, this, in the sky. The great flag-bearing tower. So the whole thought of this uh, new parliament building is democratic because actually this park that goes right on top of the building also is an expression that the people actually um, populate the building above. This is something that one of the jurors is sitting right with me. I think uh, Akil was here yesterday. Uh, we won in a competition uh, five years ago in 2007. Uh, this is something we would like to just touch upon of how or what we try to do successfully, unsuccessfully, um, to bring back or to evoke some of the things that we feel um, is required in a secretariat or a complex that is for the people. Uh oh, I'm afraid that I'm going to get uh, Siam coming up and tapping me on the. I still have some time. OK. This was uh, right next to the high court. And there were two great accesses that were coming up to it. One from Trinity. OK. Well, this is just a, a visual image, and I will not go through Next. Yeah. So this was like the Noli plan, the figure ground, and you can see the existing barracks that are there. You can see the axis coming in. 
This one it comes from all the way from Trinity Church. Next. And we actually developed an idea of how you could uh, link and reinforce these axes with landscaping, with connecting um, existing open spaces, parks, etc. And to actually reinforce this whole area of uh, Sadar as a public domain. Uh, when we were actually presenting to the cabinet, a large pop, uh, part of the cabinet said, let's sell this land to developers and move out somewhere either in Malir or uh, on Bundle Island. It was, it was hard to fight, but we did that the most valuable space in a city must be for its people. And the government is for the people. The government, they're government servants. We actually all pay their salaries. Next. Some very initial sketches. The idea was that all the existing buildings um, and our new buildings would actually focus on the high court. The high court would, the two tall buildings would reinforce that axis and also act like bookends to uh, the historic building. The idea was to push back and create a park, create a barrier-free environment and you would actually access the whole um, complex through this park. So the idea was that the park itself becomes the barrier um, and it's kind of filtered through. Just design strategies. And a most important strategy was to create a system of public discourse, a system of a great public veranda. The intention was that this veranda, uh, which is really part of our heritage, I, I think we can skip this because it's taking way too long. We can skip this. I think we're under, uh, okay. Anyway, I'll keep talking. The idea was this veranda like the Greek store, like the, the uh, verandas where people sit, would become the public space of this whole complex, linking the various buildings together. Now these buildings were focusing on the high court. The idea that our executives are accountable. The thought that everybody should be accountable and to do it in a very straightforward, simple, direct manner. Very early sketch, but the idea is very clear. A little more developed sketch. The other issue was that it takes about a hundred years or so for some of those trees that were there. And we, all we did is just adjust those courtyards to uh, accommodate those existing trees. What we did was to maintain a very, very simple 
system of buildings that in terms of rhythm, scale, height, cornice lines, etc., matched that of the existing high court. And created two counterpoints, really like bookends. The intention was to make this part of that whole environment, yet to be, not to use the word, uh, but to be humble, to be vegetated, the green roofs, wind turbines, uh, these verandas were meant to later on take PV. I can see Shayad is here, his sustainability issues were something that we were doing maybe 10, 15 years ago. And then we thought that people come to every department. How are people come? They don't come as a single, but they come with lots and lots of people with them. And to create courtyards where uh, people could say, come together. If one or two people go up into the building, but the rest can be accommodated, either in these verandas or in these public courts. And slightly more private user courts. People who are populating these buildings could use those, but all focusing onto the judiciary. Had I known the judiciary would be what was carrying the country uh, that time, maybe um, I would have felt, uh, would have done maybe some more things, a little more, uh, but this was 2005. The idea of um, the bookends again for each building as you walk through. Next. The idea that even the, uh, this horizontal street goes up into these high rises and they become populated with courtyards at various levels. In the public court, the idea of being under uh, this canopy or parasol uh, which shades you and really makes you feel as if you are part of uh, the whole um, system. You are not just sitting outside. And, and these public verandas, which I really, really feel um, would change how public buildings are viewed. We, of course, looked at all the environmental factors like double facades, green roofs, vertical wind turbines. Um, next. And of course, the idea that we have a long heritage of tile work and each building would have a slightly different gate, slightly different thing, and uh, developing the craft of tile from various other, uh, uh, for various regions. So you would have hala, you would have tatta. So I'm going to say um, just a few words before I say good night or good afternoon actually but and I do have to refer to my notes now so the the idea what Mustafa was talking about that cities um, we, we believe in them we believe that the influence of cities really really uh, goes deep into its fabric and the idea of a new kind of typology evolving um, public buildings needs to be addressed 
developed. It's been happening, and it needs to happen a little more. The barriers between public and government, or public and private, really needs to be taken down. Um, we were all part of that uh, um, lecture series last year where Yavar was talking about uh, all what we are trying to do for the city. This is the city we live in. This is where uh, we will live and die. We should really make sure that they become vibrant. Security is something that we all have to deal with, but it can be looked at in many different ways. We must make sure that our public servants do feel and realize that they are public servants. And we all, of course, must believe that there is a much better tomorrow. There are some friends who have been doing a lot of contributions to better tomorrows. They really do break large barriers. That's what I can say. We all must work really hard to bring our cities back to life. Thank you.